<laughs> it's not you, it's my kids bugging me. Uh, anyways, guys, this is me, Levon, Loaded Operator 7, and today I'm doing something a little different. Uh, this is my little home office slash um, uh, my study and my uh, little build room, I guess, when it's too cold to do anything outside. Um, I am building a uh, workshop out there, so then from now on I'll be doing my, uh, my build videos from out there. So today what I'm doing is uh, I'm showing you guys my incubator. Ugh. And um, I have one aspect to add to it yet, and it's this uh, humidifier. Uh, this is a mist, ma mist maker, and uh, it's going to bump the humidity up. This is uh, 7 bucks on eBay, I think. So I bought a lot of things on eBay. Um, I bought the egg turner and the roller down there, the conveyor belt looking thing. Uh, that was about 27 bucks. I forgot. I think it was $27. And that's going to rotate my eggs every three hours, uh, 24 hours a day. Every three hours it's going to kick on and it's going to spin my eggs so that they don't, uh, so you have to turn your eggs uh, a couple of days or a couple of times a day at most. Uh, or at least, uh, so that the uh, air sac doesn't get stuck to the side of the uh, the shell, and then your eggs don't uh, produce. You won't have a successful hatch rate. Um, I bought the uh, ceramic uh, light holders from um, from Walmart, along with that temperature sensor, and it's a humidity sensor as well. Humidity is very low because I haven't added anything to that yet. That's why I'm adding this mist maker. So it'll bump my humidity up. Uh, what? Uh, I got a couple of computer fans. I got one that way. It, it's blowing air over the light bulb going that direction. And then I got another one over here. And that's blowing air this way going over the light bulb. So that it uh, basically circulates all the hot air and keeps uh, everything, as you can see, right about 100 degrees. So um, the bulbs that I'm using, I prefer. I had purchased some halogen bulbs that don't really, uh, they still heat, but as you can see, the temperature is holding at 100. Uh, the minute those lights go off, they, the temperature starts to drop. And normally when it gets to 99 and the lights kick on, it takes them a while to um, to warm up again. So it drops down to 98.4 or 98.6 is the lowest I've seen it drop. So I kind of want to keep it between 100 and 99. So as you can see now, it took some time there. So now the temperatures are barely starting to drop. Once it gets to 99, it's going to kick on again. So what I've done is I put a square container in the corner there. It's like a little plastic container. Then I'm going to drop this guy into my misting device. And then I have some, where did I put it? Uh, I have some aquarium tubing, uh, air tubing. Uh, I had it just a second ago. What the heck did I, oh, there it is. So I got some of this uh, that I'm going to pass through the wall and go into the container. Uh, and then uh, every time it runs a little bit low, I'm going to take this syringe and it fits perfectly on the end um, and I'm just going to fill it up with uh, lukewarm water so that it's uh, about maybe an inch above this uh, this mist maker so that that way when it kicks on it'll humidify the uh, whole chamber and when the eggs are the f uh, so chicken eggs will hatch in 21 days and the first 18 days you want to keep the temperature about 50 degree uh, or 50 uh, percent is what you want the uh, humidity at and then when they go into lockdown which is day 18 19 or day 19 20 and 21 you want to bump your humidity up uh, to about 65 to 65 percent so um, that way the eggs will uh, hatch with uh, more ease when there's moisture in the air instead of being shrink wrapped in the eggs and and then they most likely won't make it out so um, what have I not covered so these uh, windows that I got here are actually picture frames from again Walmart and I bought these guys so they're um, 
eight and a half by eleven. They were a dollar ninety eight each with the frames. And the cool thing about these frames are the edges are beveled. And what's awesome about that is originally, well, I see a lot of YouTubers. They cut a channel, so they cut the square out, and then they butchered the thing. They cut this little channel so that the piece of glass sits flat into it. Well, why? Since why bother butchering the the, the styrofoam? Uh, you just cut it at a bevel, and uh, that way these guys fit perfectly into it. And then you don't even have to silicone. I just use some uh, painters tape to go around it, and that seems to be working just perfectly fine. Um, what else? So. You open it up here quickly. I got a computer fan facing that light bulb, and then I got another one there facing this ways, and that's the the vessel that's gonna hold the uh, mister. And on the sides over here, I'm thinking of putting some uh, some open uh, containers of water, or you can uh, for mass uh, temperature or to hold the temperature, you could put like a plastic. Um, a uh, bottle of water in there, something that'll hold uh, the uh, the temperature well. So what it does is it acts like a heat sink, and it'll stay at that temperature, and it'll try to hold that temperature um, by having that liquid in there. But if it's open, uh, it kind of does the same thing, but it, it bumps your humidity up quite a bit. So make sure you just keep it in the right uh, parameters uh, for what stages your eggs are in. So I plan on hatching quail eggs, and I believe this tray that'll rotate the quail eggs uh, will also fit duck, quail, chicken, geese, and turkey. So anything that'll fit on those uh, trays, it'll basically revolve them. It'll, it'll spin them every three hours. Um, each one of those eggs have different hatch dates, so do your homework and figure out what uh, when you have to take them off the rollers and set them down so that the uh, chickens or the the uh, whatever you're hatching can orientate themselves and thus hatch it's called a lockdown period so so yeah so uh that's basically it the cigar box my brother vahe gave me and uh, i turned that into my little uh housing for the uh inkbird uh itc 1000 controller temperature controller and it's all wired in there. The only thing's coming out the back is the power line and the temperature sensor, which is that black guy, that, that black cord that wraps around. So that little knob at the very end there is the temperature sensor. And um, I think that's it. I don't know what else I'm forgetting. I've had the computer fans forever. Uh, I got uh, literally about uh, 50 of these things in the garage. Uh, I'm also going to introduce this small little guy, maybe like right here or on the other side. Um, probably put it right here so that every three hours it blows some fresh air into it. Oh yeah, that's the thing. You don't want to not have fresh air coming into this thing. So I'm going to puncture three eighths uh, inch hole here, 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 and here. So that way you do want to introduce fresh air into this thing. You don't want to have it completely sealed up. So that way your chicken eggs can breathe. And obviously when they hatch, you can leave your birds in there for up to two days so that they get nice and fluffy. You don't want to take them out of the brood or out of the uh, incubator when they're still wet. So the time will come when that, uh, I have a neighbor of mine who, uh, has a couple of roosters. Sadly, mine were, uh, were killed. Uh, Thanksgiving week, I went down to visit family and uh, they got both my roosters, which were my favorite birds. Uh, I had really nice looking roosters. I think they're in my older videos. Um, and then uh, they took four of my hens as well. So now I'm left with 12 girls, and which is kind of okay, but I wouldn't mind having uh, something that I could incubate. So, all right, if there's any uh, questions or comments, leave them below. Um, otherwise, I think I've covered everything. Uh, the the um, picture frames, they had this piece of plastic square that you can have the little, uh, the little uh, mount or that, that'll hold your picture frames up, basically. And I just cut them off, and I cut that whole piece of plastic out so that it's clear view. So this is the frame... Uh, with the glass in it and like I said, it's beveled 
dollar ninety eight you're gonna spend more than two bucks just getting window pane glass uh from a hardware store so just buy those guys from Walmart and it'll save yourself a bunch of pain in the ass i mean it's it's not worth cutting out the hole and then trying to cut out and I mean these guys on YouTube just butcher these styrofoam things just so that the glass can sit flat or flush with the uh the top of it then i've seen other guys that just say screw it and they cut the opening out and then they just run a bead of uh, caulking and then they just blob the piece of uh plexiglass or glass on top of it but that looks nasty as well so this is slightly recessed which i like and it looks nice and clean so i'm okay with that and it's not siliconed in or anything like that so i will be building another incubator as you can see those trays are for quail and they'll also house chicken eggs so that's my next one I'm going to build. I have two more of these containers in the uh, garage. So you see how these guys, they'll hold either one chicken egg in the middle or four quail eggs per, per, uh, per little opening. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build the side rack myself. So that way, um, three of these, I ordered three of these racks and two of them were in decent condition. Uh, the third one came in pretty crappy condition, so like the plastic isn't even molded properly here. Um, the motor was missing a wire, so this is missing a wire. And just a couple of other things that uh, I waited a month for and it was just a waste of time. But the person that I purchased it from on eBay was nice enough to credit me back the complete purchase of it. So technically I got two of those guys for free can't complain and then I got also a free motor which I can use uh, so what I said I was gonna do is I'm just gonna take this rack over the side I'm gonna measure the spacing between the three and I'm gonna build one long rack and make it just one unit so that one motor will operate the uh, all six trays or I might even add these two trays as well the one that's missing a nub I can forget that one but it's got these two as well so that way I'll have one, two, three, six, seven, eight. So, so that would be quite a lot of quail eggs there. Uh, you do the math. But anyway, so that's my next project for right now. The only thing I got left to do is add this uh, humidifier to this unit and uh, a plug for my egg turner. And I got the uh, automatic, um, it's basically an outlet that you can program up to 10 times a day. And I got a program for every three hours. Uh, AM, it'll go off four times. And then PM, it'll go off four times. So it'll rotate my eggs uh, eight times uh, for a 24-hour period. And that should be sufficient. So anyways, yep. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, this is going to be fun. So I'm definitely looking forward. I'm also going to be building some quail hutches. I got all the lumber, everything I have in the garage, so uh, I'm just waiting for the temperature to get a little bit nicer outside. Well, I mean, it's nice now. It's just I need uh, the weekend to come around, and I'm going to go and bang them out. It's uh, going to be my next video. I'll show you guys how I'm building them. There are a couple of people that I'm uh, watching on when it comes to quail, and I want to give my shout-outs to them. One of them is a guy called Slightly Rednecked and uh he's in missouri and there's another guy who is uh, katernik's corner and he's in florida and both those guys are they got amazing videos on on the subjects of raising quail and um i would tell you guys to go and check out their channels because they got a lot of good information if you're interested in it all right guys this is it any questions or comments leave them below Thank you for watching, and thanks for being a subscriber. I've noticed my numbers have gone quite a bit up. Um, I'm not no superhero when it comes to the numbers, but over 3,000 subscribers is a lot for me, and it just tells me that there's a lot of people out there that are kind of interested in the subject. So thanks again for all the subscriptions, and uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll be more than happy to answer you guys. Thanks again. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.